Hi, welcome to another video. So, anti-gravity has been getting some major updates lately, and I thought I'd tell you about them because they actually make the tool a lot more usable now. If you remember my previous videos, I was critical of some things in anti-gravity, especially the agent manager, which was buggy, and the rate limits, which were a bit confusing. But Google has been listening to feedback and has fixed a lot of stuff here and there. So, let's talk about what's new. The major updates are the new skills feature, the updated rate limit structure, and the new secure mode. All of these are actually pretty useful, and I think that they make anti-gravity a much better option now. Let me break them down for you. First, let's talk about skills. So, skills are basically like saved workflows or custom agents that you can trigger on demand. If you have used Claude code commands or Ruse custom commands, then this is similar to that. You can create custom skills that guide the agent's behavior for specific tasks. The way it works is that you can create skills either globally or per workspace. You save them in specific locations, and then you can trigger them with a slash command whenever you want. So, let's say you have a specific way you want the agent to write tests, or you want it to follow a certain code style when refactoring. You can create a skill for that and then just trigger it whenever you need it. This is different from rules, which are always active. Rules are more like system instructions that the agent always follows, like always adding doc strings or following a specific naming convention. Skills, on the other hand, are triggered on demand by you. I think this is a great addition because it allows you to customize the agent for your specific workflows. You can create skills for things like code reviews, documentation generation, test writing, or even deployment workflows. It's similar to what I showed you in my self-spawning AI coder video where we had custom commands, but this is built directly into anti-gravity now. The nice thing is that you can share these skills across your team as well. So, if your team has a specific workflow, Everyone can use the same skills and get consistent results. This is pretty cool for sure. Now, let's talk about the rate limits update. So, this one is a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Google has announced that they are establishing weekly limits for all models, and this applies to Google AI Pro users as well. They say this is to balance giving the best possible quotas and maintaining fairness between users due to incredible demand. Now, this is not great news for pro users. Previously, the limits used to refresh every five hours, which was pretty generous. But now, with weekly limits, if you burn through your quota in a day or two, you're stuck for the rest of the week. Google says this will only affect a minority of pro users, but if you're a heavy user, you'll probably feel it. The good news is, that these limits do not apply to Google AI Ultra users. So, if you have the $200 Ultra subscription, you're still good. And Google says that Ultra continues to be the best plan for power developers. But honestly, $200 is a lot, and most people won't want to pay that. So, for the $20 Pro users, the limits are going to be relatively worse now. It's a bit disappointing, because I was praising the Pro tier in my previous videos for its value. But hey, it's still usable. You can still use models like Opus 4.5, Gemini 3 Pro, and Gemini 3 Flash, which is great nonetheless. You just need to be a bit more careful about how you use your quota throughout the week. One thing that I want to mention here is that anti-gravity calculates usage based on work done rather than the number of requests. This means that simple tasks use less of your quota, while complex reasoning tasks use more. This is because of the thinking tokens that Gemini 3 generates 
during its internal reasoning process. These hidden tokens count against your usage. So, if you're doing a lot of complex planning or debugging, you'll use up your limit faster. Keep this in mind when managing your weekly quota. But regardless of your tier, all users still get access to Gemini 3 Pro unlimited tab completions and all the product features like the agent manager and browser integration. So, even with the new limits, it's still better than most alternatives if you ask me. I think the free tier is still pretty solid, and even the pro tier, despite the new weekly limits, gives you access to models like Opus 4.5 for free, which would cost you a lot if you were paying for Claude's API directly. So, it's still good value, just not as generous as before. Now let's talk about Secure Mode. This is actually a pretty important update because security has been a concern with anti-gravity since it launched. If you remember, within 24 hours of launch, security researchers found some vulnerabilities where the agent could potentially leak data or execute unauthorized commands. Google even has a disclaimer in their terms of use, saying that anti-gravity has certain security limitations. So, secure mode is their answer to this. When you enable secure mode, several security measures are enforced to protect your environment. First, there are different terminal permission modes. Turbo mode lets the agent automatically execute all terminal commands without asking you. This is the fastest, but also the riskiest, because it can run anything. Auto mode is a balance where the agent analyzes each command and decides when it needs your approval. This gives you some oversight while still being fast. Off mode requires explicit human approval for every terminal command. This is the slowest, but also the safest. They recommend this for production branches and sensitive projects. Apart from this, you also have allow lists and deny lists. Allow list is a positive security model where everything is forbidden unless you specifically allow it. This is the most secure configuration. Deny list is the opposite, where everything is allowed unless you specifically block it. This is useful if you want to be fast, but want to block some dangerous commands. I'd recommend using secure mode if you're working on anything sensitive or if you're in a team environment. You can configure allow lists for the commands that you commonly use and block everything else. This way, even if the agent tries to do something weird, it won't be able to. For enterprise users, they also recommend running anti-gravity inside a sandbox or VM, setting command allow lists, and using version control to audit all changes. This is pretty standard stuff, but it's good that Google is being transparent about the security considerations. So, these are the major updates. Skills give you custom workflows. The new rate limits are a bit worse for pro users, but still usable. And secure mode gives you better control over what the agent can do. I think the skills and secure mode updates are genuinely good additions. The rate limit change is disappointing for pro users, but it's not the end of the world. You still get access to Opus 4.5, Gemini 3 Pro, and Gemini 3 Flash, which is great. Just be mindful of your weekly usage. The free tier is still the best free tier that you can get anywhere for an AI editor. You get access to all these models for free, which is insane. And even the Pro tier, despite the new weekly limits, is still decent value because you also get 2 terabytes of Google Drive storage, Gemini Pro plan for mobile, and better limits in Gemini, CLI, and Jules. The agent manager is still a bit buggy, and I still recommend using the side panel agent for most tasks because it's more stable. But overall, anti-gravity is still a solid option, and skills and secure mode make it even more customizable and secure. If you haven't tried it yet, 
I'd say give it a shot. Start with the free tier, and if you don't hit the rate limits, just keep using it. If you're a power user who needs unlimited access, then the $200 Ultra tier is the only option now, which is a bummer. But for most people, the free or pro tier should still work fine. That is majorly about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.